you wrote an article <coughs> that uh, mm -hmm. that is one of the most powerful ones I've come across in quite a while. And I read like 60 articles a day. So um, oh. this, this <laughs> is you. the this is the article um, and it's called mm -hmm. um, Killing Capitalism. World Economic Forum warns of cyber attack leading to systemic collapse of the global financial system. So could you take us on a little deep dive into the next thing that they're intuitively warning might be coming? <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, uh, that article you just held up is actually the first in a two part article. I'm working on the second part right now. Oh, good. So, um, uh, and actually this uh, article that you showed also is sort of a successor to a previous article I did, which was about the World Economic Forum uh, simulating the collapse of the economy via a cyber attack which was called Cyber Polygon. It took place in July, 2020, and they're going to do another one this year in July, 2021. Uh, their main partner in that effort is a subsidiary, a cybersecurity subsidiary of Russia's largest bank, Spurbank, uh, which is due to release, uh, I actually believe they've already released their uh, central bank backed digital currency. Um, uh, I'm assuming your audience is aware of this effort to, uh, in connection with the fourth industrial revolution uh, and fiat currency and move it to a central bank digital currency system. Uh, and we've already we, seen we've this with China. We've covered some of that. Uh, and next month, uh, the whole month is on money. So we'll be going. Ah, great. Yeah. yeah, well, as a preview then for, uh, as one example, like China has released a digital yuan and what they're doing there is putting expiration dates on money, preventing people from saving and forcing people to spend, uh, putting people in a sort of con 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 constant situation of financial dependency um, in a sense, because you're not allowed to save your own wealth. And so your wealth doesn't really belong to you in that case and actually a lot of the central banks in the west despite all the anti-china rhetoric you may hear from their politicians are planning to do much the same this expiration date business um so this more recent article um following uh, after the simulation was published in november 2020 um it's a partnership between the world economic forum and the carnegie endowment for international peace which is another one of these uh you know globalist public private partnership think tanks with a, a lot of intelligence connections and you know connections to relatively uh, shady people and whatnot. Um, and partners of this report include uh, the biggest private banks in the world, including the biggest banks in the United States, um, the IMF, uh, the World Bank, uh, SWIFT, uh, and the central banks, not just of the US, um, but of England uh, and, and various other countries, all getting together to basically talk about um, you know, the inevitability of the cyber tech, how it's going to collapse the financial system, unless we implement the solution they want before. And of course that won't happen because it's an insane solution. I'll get to that in a second. So basically it's the solution they will pitch after this uh, cyber attack takes place. And of course, I'm sure a lot of people are familiar that the World Economic Forum uh, just a few months before COVID simulated a global coronavirus pandemic in event 201. Um, and so they have a tendency to sort of have um, these simulations turn into real life events. And that's not just true for them. Um, if you're familiar with uh, the events of 9-11, uh, the drills that took place before that in the UK, 7-7 and numerous other um, historical examples, the anthrax attacks in 2001 having dark winter, things like that, these simulations often seem to predict reality. Um, we also know that the financial system um, ever since 2008 has just been inflated into another bubble, those structural issues uh, were never resolved. So these uh, private bankers uh, and the central bankers that have enabled them uh, to do this are looking for a way uh, to get out with, but absolving themselves publicly um, of any role in this collapse. So they avoid a, an, a, an unrest situation like 2008 um, so, you know, obviously saying that this is, was a cyber attack, these anonymous hackers did it, they can blame a nation state or a group they don't like or whoever, um, and people will just run with it because that's how cybersecurity reporting has been for years is this guy said it, it must be true. And the headline says Russia or China or Iran, North Korea, what have you, did the hack and they never actually provide any real evidence for that. So. The most recent example of that would be solar winds. The intelligence community said it was likely Russian in origin, uh, never provided evidence, have yet to provide evidence for that uh, pretty bold claim, but it was parroted uh, and continues to be parroted uh, by mainstream media outlets that definitely Russia was the culprit. Uh, despite a lack of evidence. So that's what happens, I guess, after uh, the Iraq war and no accountability for that, they can just um, say whatever. So the solution these people are suggesting as a way to prevent uh, this event 
um, is that they, they uh, are calling for a fusion of private banks, the government regulators of the private banks and intelligence agencies. Um, for the national security state. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what's interesting is that after 9-11, there was sort of an effort to bring this together um, with a program that was being run by DARPA, where um, it was about creating a futures market for predicting terror attacks, um, where you could basically gamble on the likelihood of a terror attack happening somewhere in the world. And, you know, if you work for the CIA, um, who oftentimes uh, orchestrate those things abroad, uh, either directly or through proxies, it's the biggest opportunity for insider trading ever. Um, and obviously, fusing all of these three groups together as a way to prevent cyber crime, you know, obviously is going to just enable, uh, you know, financial crime for the people that are part of the system. Um, because we know that they've participated in, in money laundering and numerous other things. I mean, all of these big banks, you, despite, you know, um, the, uh, well, you know, I don't really think the US government's necessarily interested in rooting out corruption in the banking industry, right? So they just, <laughs> <laughs> so they just try and, you know, go after what they can to save face. And so even if you just look at that, you know, cases uh, targeting HSBC, Deutsche Bank for mass la money laundering, including for drug cartels and terrorist groups, I mean, it's all on the books. Um, this would just allow them to do that, but with complete impunity. Um, into the near future um, in a situation where they plan to introduce currencies that are much easier to manipulate control and also have a double uh, use for surveillance because if it's digital, they know exactly what you're spending. The anonymity of cash, for example, is totally um, eradicated in that sense. So um, it's a slippery slope and it's also much easier to censor people financially um, instead of deplatforming them from payment processors and things like that. You can just turn on, uh, turn off their ability to participate in this coming economic system. So it's a recipe uh, for disaster and things that the global public would not accept unless co uh, consent was manufactured for this new system. And so, uh, you know, this scenario they're laying out here is very likely. And um, I'll be showing in my next report that it's not just this WEF Carnegie Endowment report. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of other groups involved as well and uh, in, in direct involvement of governments, intelligence agencies, um, and the people that run the current financial system, it should be a big wake up call. Um, and they're specifically talking about going after cryptocurrency, no, really just Bitcoin. Uh, the, it sounds like they're planning to let some of the other ones survive and sort of be incorporated into the system, but um, they're planning to go after um, exchanges, infrastructure, things like this, any sort of uh, digital currency, that um, could threaten the uh, agenda that they want to push through here with their digital currencies. They're going to try and and just totally uh, illegalize and, and go after it like it's a terrorist 